Hey, Tiger here. Welcome to our stream tonight. Hey, AJ. Thank you for moderating this stream again. And uh, yeah, our disclaimer in the beginning, we are doing simulation here. We are talking about the computer game and how to play it, even if we are trying to understand the concepts as if they were real. Dobri Vecher, is that how you pronounce it, ZD Rea? Thank you very much. Good evening to you as well. Nice to have you on the stream, even though we're not talking about it is yes, but about pulse code cap signaling. I'm really excited that next week or something we will get an update for the Boston Providence route, the Boston Sprinter DLC made by Brendan Cactus Juice. And uh, yeah, that is that is what I am really looking forward to. Since I first played the Boston route when it came out more than a year ago, I was waiting for a signaling update and now we are getting one. Let's just hope that everything works out very well. Mm. And the idea was to look into the concept of cap signaling, pulse code cap signaling to be exact, and have a look at the game pre-update so that we can uh, soon make um, a second stream and look at the same service maybe post update and how they got it right. Um, obviously we're playing in Boston for that so the DLC is Boston and I picked a service that runs from Providence to Boston and um, we will get a lot of signaling and uh, as much cap signaling as you can get on that route so to have a good um, view on what is happening there. So it's the Boston mm. Sprinter DLC timetable. Let's just spawn on foot. When is the service mm. to begin? 1924 in Providence. Mm. Um, I wanted to do it in June so that we have enough mm. daylight. So if we spawn at 1925 we should be good. Boston Providence is, I do not know if it is the, the northernmost part of the northeastern corridor, if actually there are trains running even further to the north. But it is quite in the north and uh, we have this nice train here. I don't know exactly what direction we have to go. Probably the other direction, yeah. Yeah, AJ says, man, I wish it was tuned for real warmth. Well, where did I get stuck here? I can just pass very slowly past the train. Maybe if we go that way. Yes. Oh, it's actually the end. I went into the wrong direction. Which one is my train after all? Where is it sitting? Is it actually starting from the other side? Don't run me over please. To be honest, are we at the correct station at, at least? Or is the service looking into the wrong direction? Boston South Station? Why is the locomotive on this end? Well, I'm afraid the locomotive is at the wrong end. We cannot run the service when we are spawning mm. from, from foot. <laughs> Well, let's just start it the traditional way then from sitting in the cab. If the locomotive is sitting on the wrong end, we cannot use it. Probably the the train has not arrived yet. Was it still to arrive for five minutes before? Mm. Whatever. 
Maybe it's not a bug. But let's make it easier. Let's pick this um, livery here, 1930. Ah! I just wanted to do it in June again. I have to restart it or we are running at night. See, it is dark if we run that service like this. So, focus now. Time to your ball. I wanted to pick this uh, anniversary livery. The 1930 and I wanted to do it in June. Yes, so that it is warm enough for AJ. So, now it looks a bit better, now the locomotive is at the correct end. We put in the reverser, put it to a neutral first. Ah, I will have to um, restart it once more, because I wanted to uh, demonstrate a buggy thing. If you put in your reverser, put it to neutral to set up the train and everything, and then you happen to put the reverser not to forward to drive, but to get it into out again and then turn it to forward, you will see that the cap signaling system is putting you in restricted and you're not, um, you will not be able to lose this until you get better signals. So wary with that, if you put in the reverse key, this one, and you put it to neutral to set up the train, you must be careful that you don't put it to out again, otherwise you will spoof your cap signaling. This having said, I can see there will be the next one banned for offering promotion and stuff to the channel. Thank you very much for your consideration, but no, I'm good. With the US that I have, they might not be many, but they are dear. Handling to neutral. Then we have to get up to look at this board. Turn on the ATC, turn on the axis, turn on the alerter, sit back down again. Maybe to open the doors in the meantime, you won't find any buttons for opening the doors in the cab because they are operated here from the cars. There is actually a panel that opens and closes the doors, but obviously you can use your keyboard sheet uh, uh, shortcuts. Yeah, uh, brake setup. We have a button to select the brake mode, put it to passenger, full service on the independent, release the automatic, headlights on dim first as long as we're in the station, ditch lights on, and then we are good to go. We have a very complex computer interface here for this locomotive with a lot of stuff that can be displayed. Some of the things are actually working. We have a distance counter that is kind of working. We have um, cruise control that is working only halfway, so I would say. It is not really promoted that it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it will just uh, confuse your loco totally. And every time you put your lever, your throttle lever into zero, the train starts accelerating with all its might. By the way, this nice building over, over there is the Rhode Island State House. We are here in Rhode Island and since we are going to Boston, we will be crossing a state border. Put the reverser in forward, close the doors, release the independent. You can see the pressure in the brake cylinders drop with the red hand here. 
and then we can apply some power you can see the power applying here we have a very well working accelerometer here on this locomotive if it is blue we are accelerating if it is yellow we are slowing down and we get our cap signals here this is the cap signaling part this tells us axis is giving us a civil speed limit of 30 and the first signal that we are getting is a yellow over flashing green actually now we waited long enough so that we got a full green that was an approach limited but now we are no longer limited for that by the way I wanted to uh, put in some role-playing information here for testing the system you are exempt from the provision in NORAG rules 552 553 drive as cap signals indicate when slowing down for signals try not to apply more brake force than necessary to achieve, achieve uh, suppression <laughs> so what this means actually those NORAG rules 500 52 and 53 we will have a look at this later a bit but for now just let's keep in mind that we drive what cap signals tell us even if the wayside signals do not confirm with the cap signals axis is giving us a civil speed limit of 30 even though we have a full clear on the signaling front I already went beyond this 30, should not have done, now it went up to 60. Our distance counter is counting the feet. We know that we are 750 feet long, so after having traveled 750 feet we can accelerate. I have read some, somewhere that access actually should take into account the length of the train just like ETCS is supposed to do that but I can't say if every access implementation and especially the Amtrak access uh, uh, implementation here on this route can do that so I don't know if it's a bug or if it is represented correctly yes CD Radar you need your passport because we are driving from Rhode Island to Massachusetts. At the moment we are still in Rhode Island, but as soon as we are going across the junction that is ahead, we will be passing over to Massachusetts. The aspect display unit here works quite well, uh, as we know it from the, from the video about the NORAC signaling before. If access limit is lower, then this access light will light up and give us the speed limit of the track, the civil speed limit. If the signal speed limit is lower, then this button or this light will light up the ATC light and it will give us the lower speed that comes from the signal aspect. Whereas the signal aspect, talking about signal aspects, have you ever seen a signal aspect like this? Yellow over double flashing green. If anyone can tell me what signal aspect this is, then I will take off my hat to this person. I don't think that a signaling aspect like this exists. Approach limited over limited. never seen that before good thing is that they ordered us to drive according to cap signals and now the cap signals give us an approach medium I yanked in my brakes to 66 percent so that the suppression light turns on until we are slowed down to 45 and then I will release now we are passing a yellow over red over red signal that is an approach signal and the cap signaling drops to 30 again suppression braking until we are beyond the limit that is indicated 
we know that from oh you cannot see it because of the logo well maybe like this you can see it right at least in my stream here yes okay I will take care of that in the upper part you will get the actual aspect from the cap signaling like approach at the moment we will see it in the up in the presentation what signaling aspects there are and that we can get and in the row beneath we will get our maximum speed if it's the maximum speed that comes from the signaling aspect the ATC lamp will be on if it is the speed that comes from the track limit then the access lamp will be on as easy as that as soon as we get a lower speed we have to hit the acknowledge button this one and we have to yank the brakes into suppression so that we so that we do not get a penalty brake now the signal aspect changed from approach to clear obviously the red light in front of us that was slowing us down cleared and at the same time the speed limit from the track was increased from 60 to 70 so we can speed up again a bit from my root knowledge I know that the limit will drop to 60 very soon so I won't accelerate beyond that but I will stick to the 60 and here we are track limit dropped to 60 even though we have a green light we cannot go faster than 60 maybe we, we use this here can switch on the lights to bright since we are out of the station area For the traction on this locomotive, we have a combined power and brake lever. If we want to use the electric brake only, we can use this combined lever to pull it back. If we want to use combined air brake and electric brake or dynamic brake, we would use this brake handle here for the automatic brake. It blends in the dynamic brake automatically so this would be the brake that we use for slowing down this is the brake that we would use for while well, holding the train prevent the train from going too fast now the speed limit increased beyond the 125 we can see it well it is exactly 125 and now we are getting the limit from the clear 125 signaling aspect and we can increase our speed accordingly the locomotive has in the systems ATC axis I think you can't see that on the stream it is very small you have two uh, fields telling you what the ATC limit is at the moment and what the uh, axis limit is at the moment sometimes you lose this feed though so it is not really reliable but it is there closing in on a station lights to dim horn bell bell lights to bright and we're accelerating I know that on the top of the hill that we are just running up to we will have to slow down to 110 to go through a bend there so I will probably not accelerate beyond the 110 even though the limit at the moment allows that we will get an access access warning 
before we actually get to the limit and sometimes the warning is soon enough so that with suppression brakes we are actually able to slow down for the limit so the warning that you get from the access system here it dropped to 110 even though you can see it, we are far away from the actual uh, reduction in speed limit so the warning distance here in this DLC is significantly longer than for example in the Harlem line DLC this is the curve that I always call the tank car curve because there is always this cut of tank cars sitting on the siding and this is where we got the 110 reduction increased to 125 and we can accelerate and here yeah you can see that the speed limit from the track is actually 150 but we are not getting a better aspect than clear 125 so the signal aspect is governing and while we are accelerating at this point and having talked about that much stuff about signaling aspects and cap signaling aspects I would like to put the presentation here because there won't be a lot of stopping on this service um, if you ever asked yourself if you ever wondered how the cap signals actually get into the train if it is by radio if it is by balises like we had it on the ETCS system or how that works um, Let's have a look at the track circuits and the pulse code cap signaling. It is actually quite an old technology, about 100 years old. In the 1920s they started to implement stuff like this and obviously it has been modernized and has been made more complicated and more versatile but the first beginnings were already in uh, the 1920s when the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, started implementing cap signaling that are based on the track circuit. What is a track circuit now? I think we have talked about this in uh, the the TPWS video in, in, in Great Britain. Track circuits are circuits that are running in a section of track that is connected with wires in a way that from some power source, some uh, device, you have a circuit running up one rail and back the other rail. And at the other end of the circuits, the two rails are connected. So that would actually uh, be a track circuit with insulation gaps between the uh, track at this uh, in this setup. So you can have an electric current run from this machine up one rail then back the other rail and back into the machine that is a track circuit and obviously after this track circuit the next one starts and before that there the other one ends and if you are doing it like this you actually need those insulation gaps so that the current does not run all the way down the track and never return and in the beginning there were actually tracks with those insulation gaps in between I don't want to talk too much about the technology that is uh, required to do that and uh, how you can implement track circuits in continuously welded rail rail without those insulation gaps this is possible but I don't want to go uh, into the technology what I am not really qualified for, but um, I think to understand the principle we do not need uh, to know all those technical things. What is, is important for us is that we have a segment of track where we can have this continuous um, current running. And as soon as a train is in this track, the steel wheels of the train, the axles, they shortcut this circuit like this 
The current will always go the way of the least resistance and if there is no train in the track it will go all the way until it gets to the wire and then back across the other rail and if a train is in the track and shortcuts it then the way of least resistance is through the axles of the train. And what is that goof for? We can use that for a lot of uh, things, for example automatic block signals so that the machines know, okay, there is a train in this section, we will set the signals at the beginning of this block to red and the next one to yellow. And as soon as the train clears, then the circuit runs all the way and then we can switch the signals back to clear. That will be the automatic block system um, uh, implementation for it. Another thing that we can do with it is to send cap signals into the train. We can use this current, what is in that case an AC, an alternate current, you know, electricity. It is not running from plus to minus all the way, but it constantly changing polarity in a pattern of like 50 hertz or 100 hertz or whatever, how many times per second or even more. So we have this AC current, this uh, alternating current in, um, in, in the track and running through the train. And like on an old school FM radio, you maybe remember those devices that we had in the days back then, you would tune the device to a certain frequency and then this device was receiving electromagnetic waves through the air that were sent from a radio uh, emitter and then you can could listen to music and as soon as you did not like the music anymore you would tune your system to a different frequency and uh, listen to a baseball game or a different uh, music or whatever whatever you liked the idea was on a certain frequency you could get a certain signal and how was it done on the FM radio by modulating the frequency? You would set it to a certain carrier frequency and this frequency was slightly modulated and those modulations in this frequency would tell the radio receiver to play the music or whatever. And this principle is used for transmitting the signals into the train. You would have, for example, your AC circuit running on 100 Hertz then you would need a receiver on the train that can that is tuned to the 100 Hertz frequency and then obviously you would not send music to your train but you would send signals to your train that beep like pulses beep 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 or faster beep 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 beep, beep or even faster still so, and the rate with the pulses or the, the, the rate by which the pulses were received by the train would tell the train how fast the train can go and what signal to display. Like for example, if there were no pulses at all, the train would say, okay, restricted. What is the most restricting um, aspect? With faster beeping, with faster more pulses per minute, the train would get an approach or a medium approach or a clear if they are beeping very fast. So that was the first implementation. In the first implementation there were two, then there was a system with four different aspects and it was enlarged by putting on a second frequency that the train can listen to not only the 100 hertz but the 250 hertz and in the combination of the pulses sent on these frequencies and uh, received by the train, the train equipment would know what cap signal aspect it was to display and there was actually a lot of different machines that showed the driver um, uh, what aspect was, uh, was sent to the train by the machine next to the track and um, we have looked at one of them, the speed or aspect display unit uh, in the F40 and the Boston Sprint uh, uh, DLC. This funny thing where the aspects are uh, 
arranged on the clock face. You have a speedometer and around the speedometer balloons with different numbers and those different numbers in the balloons would represent the aspects. In our train that we are running today, let's just have a look again at the train that we are running today. We have it more sophisticated, we have actually color lights and we have the name of the signal displayed on this thingy here that is our aspect display unit. We had it on the Harlem Line stream for example or on the Long Island Railroad stream and video um, that there are more different ways like with illuminated letters or illuminated numbers on, on the uh, M3 and M7 trains on Harlem and Long Island Railroad. Here we have the whole program, the signal aspects uh, in color lights plus the name and then the speed that derives out of it. And uh, yeah, let's see what aspects there are that the system can display and for that let's just recap our signals that we have in the NORAC signaling system. We know that from Federal Code of Regulations 49 um, we need to have certain signals, red and green, uh, for go and stop and uh, lunar or yellow for restricted or approach. That is what the Federal Code of Regulation gives us as a minimum requirement for the signaling system. We also remember that there were different speed uh, thresholds in uh, the American systems, typically, especially in the speed signaling um, systems from the normal speed, getting slower, limited, typically medium, slow, restricted, and then stop. And that for those uh, names, those speed categories we had in different systems, different values um, that go with it. So limited in the NORAC system is 45 miles per hour, medium is 30 miles, slow is 15 miles, restricted is maximum 50 or 20, depending on whether we are in interlockings or out of interlockings, and the max is important. Oh yeah, we, have, we are supposed to switch back to the presentation, sorry for that. Um, yeah, you did not miss much. This is it's the presentation again, just like I said. The different speed categories, normal speed, limited, medium, slow, restricted, and then stop. And in the NORAC universe, we have those speeds defined for passenger services. Limited is 45, medium is 30, slow 15, and restricted is on-site, but not, s not faster than 15 or 20, depending on whether we are in or out. Uh, the uh, the interlockings. CD radars are one of the safety systems we use in Prague Metro works like this and trains have receivers over both tracks but it's old system and it's being replaced. Yeah it is an old system and I have read that uh, all over the world railroads are using a system of that kind. Maybe they have receivers over both tracks as, as well in uh, the uh, northeast corridor. I, I do not know exactly. Maybe they have as in redundancy system anyway. Um, I've just seen the picture where it was on the right or in front of the right wheel. The only thing that is important is that the re receiver is in front of the first axle obviously, but because if the first axle is shortcutting the circuit then the receiver would not get any signal if it was uh, fixed behind the first axle. So that I think is the most important um, the most important requirement that the receiver are in front of the first axle. Maybe there are two actually in the northeastern corridor uh, vehicles. If anyone knows, let me know in the in, in the comments. It would be interesting. Back to the NORAC system with its uh, speed categories. What we need to have for stop is the full uh, red. What we need for the clear is the green on top the yellow for the approach, the normal approach without any uh, uh, special indication for the speed at once and we know as soon as we are passing a yellow uh, signal we have to reduce our speed to medium if we are not already at medium and uh, 
be prepared to stop at the next uh, signal that is most probably red. Then we have a couple of signals that represent restricted speed. They have in common that they either have the lunar on the bottommost signal head, the lunar white, or they have the yellow on the bottommost with at least one red signal on top of it. So with the yellow on top and red beneath it is an approach with the yellow on the bottom with reds on top of it it is a restricted signal in the NORAC universe. Then we know the principle of uh, shifting the green light from top to bottom and if we shift it in the middle we end up at medium speed makes sense green in the middle is medium if it is on the bottom it tells us to go slow speed from here, slow clear. As soon as we are through the interlockings, we can return to track speed. And we al already have seen that a couple of times. If we have the green light flashing, we would promote it from mediate medium to limited. So obviously, everyone can see this is an addition to the old system. Um, because in the beginning, we only had turnouts, switches. They were limited to 30, then we got turnouts that uh, allowed a higher speed and so we needed a signal aspect for it. And this is how the limited came in. And from the Canadian stream that we, uh, that we did, you might remember that sometimes you had this triangle, this yellow triangle, to tell you that this is a limited instead of a medium switch. But in this system we just have it flashing. At the same time, fail-safe idea, if the flasher breaks, then it will go back to only a medium signal aspect and allow a slower speed but better we give the train a slower speed that it can actually go than the other way around that uh, uh, if we would give the train a faster speed that is safe then this can lead to mayhem for those speeds we typically have um, approach signals so if we put on the medium clear aspect um, a yellow on top, we have the approach medium. Correspondingly, we have the approach slow, if we put on the slow aspect a red light on top, and this can also look like this, double yellow over red. The approach slow tells us to go down to medium, just like an approach would tell us. The approach medium does not give us any uh, requirements to slow down at the moment, we will have to be at medium at the next one but in the meantime we can stay at what speed we have same goes for the approach limited again you can see the ruling principle put a yellow one on top of the clear signal and then you get the approach signal for the corresponding clear signal if you want to tell the engineer that he has to slow down already now and not uh, at the next signal then you can shift the approach signal to the bottom like here shifting both lights the green uh, the yellow over green down one position then you have a medium approach medium telling you you have to pass this signal with medium speed and be prepared to uh, approach the next signal with medium speed again so you would get this for example if you are running across a switch now and then a uh, across another switch here. So two switches with 30 miles per hour maximum, you could get a sequence of that kind. Same goes for the slow, we have a um, medium approach slow here, that looks like this. We have a medium approach, if we want to order the engineer to slow down to medium at once, not just eventually until he gets to the next signal but at once not passing this signal here faster it can also look like this if you only have two signal heads you can have this yellow uh, light flashing so that you don't mistake it for an restricted signal with the yellow one on the bottom most and then in between if we have three signal heads and we have the medium uh, a light the light in the middle flashing in yellow we would have a limited approach signal meaning we have to slow down to limited speed here maybe run across 
some switch and then eventually drop down to medium until we get to the red light and also we can have a slow approach signal with the bottom most of three flashing but those signals i have not seen them in the game they are not so common but they uh, tell you that this system actually is a system and not just uh, a random allocation of different signal aspects more important is the advanced approach the flashing yellow on the top we have that in a couple of systems tells you the next signal will be an approach and the second signal will be at red that is more or less the NORAC system that you can read up in the NORAC operating rules 11th edition from 2018 in force since the 1st of February 2018 in the rules 279 following we also have the stop and proceed you remember that it is a full red signal with a plague with a number plague and that means you have to stop and then proceed with restricted speed and then there was a thing like cap speed where actually the signal would uh, refer you to your cap signaling uh, system we have this on the Harlem line a lot there we have typically um, cap speed aspects what would be here in the NORAC system one green on the top flashing and then you just have to look on your cap signaling apparatus how fast you can go there are things like distance signals if you have a signal with an A plague um, this is not a block signal it does not give you any information but just like the distance signals in the German um, HV system for example they just warn you about the status of the incoming signal whether it might be uh, a clear one or a restricted one but I have never seen a signal of that kind in the game so let's take them out to not confuse things just to uh, not forget that the NORAC system actually provides for um, for for distance signals that do not have any uh, immediate information about the block so that was the recap for the NORAC signaling system and um, you can see we have many more um, more aspects on the wayside signals that we have on our cab signaling computer in the traditional system we had four that's why it was called the four aspect cap signaling system later it was expanded to nine the nine aspect cap signaling system and if you count it there are more aspects than nine so obviously we cannot represent each and every one of those signals in an aspect on our cap signals so how do we do it then which um, signal aspects can we display on our cap signaling unit we can get a clear and in the game at the moment we are re limited to a clear 125 which ma what makes sense because the locomotive that we are driving uh, the Siemens ACS64 um, is limited to 125 it is not allowed to go f uh, faster so we do not need a faster clear here with the Axela that is uh, that is coming to the game soon um, we will need a faster um, aspect to allow us to go full line speed of 150 um, but we will get to that we have been talking about the thing tuned to a certain frequency and then the faster the frequency beeps the faster the signal can go um, this is one of the traditional four aspects the clear in this fashion the clear 125 the next one that we had in the traditional system was an approach medium that would be in this line here approach medium yellow over green then we have an approach what is important because we have a, we need to have a warning when we are getting close to a red signal that is the yellow and the fourth of the classic four uh, aspect system is the red over lunar that gives us a restricting so those are the four aspects in the traditional system and how are they 
how do they translate into speeds? Obviously, the clear 125 translates into a maximum speed of 125. The approach medium translates into a signal speed of 45. The approach to a 30. What you can see here, as soon as you get an approach, you have to slow down to 30. Um, whereas in the medium, you're actually free until you get to the medium. But in the cap signaling system, the approach medium is associated with the 45 and the restricted is the 20. That is how it translates in your computer. And um, not to spoil too much, pre-update, our uh, locomotive that we are riding on is only able to display those four signaling aspects, the traditional four. And coming back to our uh, our uh, example with the FM radio on the 100 Hertz frequency if we don't get any beeps at all then the signal will drop to restricting this is more or less like the on-site or the staff responsible mode on the ETCS telling the engineer engineer you have to uh, use your eyes and not drive faster uh, than you can still stop in case that you are running up to um, an obstacle. Restricted speed and don't go faster than 20. And you can see this is the fallback uh, 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 aspect. As soon as anything breaks in the system and we are losing the connection to the signaling box and we are not receiving any signal anymore, the receiver breaks or whatever, we always end up with no signal and no signal resulting in the most restricting aspect here restricting telling the driver don't go faster than you can see more beeps 75 pulses per minute would result in an approach even more beeps 120 pulses per minute will result in an approach medium and 180 pulses per minute will receive uh, will result in the clear aspect here why those strange numbers 75 120 180 well obviously there must be enough difference so that it allows for a bit of a margin of error if the train uh, miscounts uh, it must be clear which signal is meant and then the other thing is yeah there were numbers chosen that even for some reason there is an echo or something that leads to doubling or halving this frequency that um, no frequency or no rate is actually uh, a multiple of another rate. So if you do the math, this ends up in 150 if you double it, and 120 is lower, 180 is above, and so on. This is the idea that, yeah, that's good thinking, right? So, so even if you have an echo or something distorts the signal, then the train does not get confused. It will always end up with the correct, um, with the correct aspect in. But those are only four and you can see between 45 and 125 there is quite a spread and uh, if you are going happily your way 125 and the next signal that you get for 45 then you have to yank in the brakes quite heavily and you need some distance to slow your, your train down and uh, on the other hand uh, across the years there were uh, turnouts switches introduced with much higher speeds that you can go on them and cross them so you needed more aspects for the cap signaling system and um, what they came up with was to use a second frequency so a second radio station if you want it like this and uh, broadcast a second signal on the 250 hertz frequency and the, tra tr the train would have to listen to two frequencies at the same time and uh, then you can send the train more diverse signals actually the idea again fail safe you would promote one aspect that you had already by doubling the same rate on the other frequency so like here in this example 100 hertz 180 pulses per minute will result in a clear 125 and 100 hertz and the 120 uh, the 250 hertz frequency sending the 180 pulses 
would result in a better aspect clear 150 and then you can go 150. Here more or less the same in the 120 rate uh, aspect usually an approach medium if you send the 120 rates on the second frequency then you would end up in a cap speed 80 to close the gap a bit here between the 45 and the 125 end up in an 80 again if the train cannot understand for some reason the 250 hertz frequency the same aspect would just drop to the lower uh, classic aspect and display the approach medium 45 instead of the cap speed 80 would be a nuisance because the train is uh, slow and causes uh, a lot of delay maybe but always better than running too fast derailing or whatever good what do we do with our 100 hertz 75 rate the approach 30 we can promote it to an approach medium 30 so what do we gain with that it's uh, still the same speed but we can tell the engineer whether he is approaching a red signal actually or whether he is just approaching a turnout with a limit to 30 and is it is not and he is not required to stop at the next signal how those aspects are actually used then in real life is more than i can tell you i'm still working on that to find out uh, what the proper progressions are and in what context they are used what i can tell you is that the nine aspect system allows you to upgrade this um, aspect to this aspect here approach medium 30. the zero pulse um, aspect we do not upgrade because we still want to have it as a fallback um, aspect so every time we have zero pulses on the 100 hertz um, frequency we will go into restricted and end up with a maximum speed of 20 this is why we end up in the nine aspect uh, system with an uneven number of aspects because the restricted uh, aspect we will keep that as the fallback aspect the default aspect if everything else fails we will end up with a restricted uh, aspect telling the driver to rely or the engineer to rely on their own eyes um, yeah I was saying nine if you count correctly there are only seven where are the other two aspects the other two aspects are using an even faster rate 270 pulses you can see that is above the 180 and if you send it on both channels on both frequencies you will get a clear 100 so that is between the clear 125 and the cap speed 80 giving you a speed of 100 or if you send it only on the 100 hertz and no signal on the 250 hertz channel then you will end up with a cap speed of 60 closing the gap between the 45 and the 80 I put in another color to those systems because that what they they are um, an extension that is only used in in high traffic areas and uh, yeah I've been following a, a thread on on the forum where we have been discussing this uh, where they are actually used those those aspects as far as I know they are only used in the area around New York Penn Station where Amtrak and the Long Island Railroad are, Railroad are sharing um, tracks so that the Amtrak trains need to be more or less compatible with the uh, trains from the Long Island Railroad and if you think back to the Long Island Railroad stream that we may we have talked about a system the AS see the automatic speed control system that the Long Island Railroad is using and that they are um, incorporating the track speed limits in signaling aspects right they are signaling their engineers the track limits more or less along with the um, signaling aspects that, that, that are created by the traffic and for this they obviously need more aspects than a different railroad that gets the track limits in by a system like access for example this is 
overly simplified the reason why on the track that is shared between Amtrak and the Long Island Railroad, we need a bit more aspects than usual. And uh, they actually, if I remember correctly, use um, even two more aspects on 250 hertz, but with a rate of 420 pulses per minute to even more diversify that speed range here. But this is what is what what the Long Island Railroad is doing, or at least has been doing before they were forced to use the uh, the the access system. Amtrak trains on even on on these tracks are only using those nine aspects: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9. In the game, at the moment, we're only getting the classic 100Hz aspects, everything that is uh, labeled in orange here. The other aspects, I have not seen them on the ACS uh, 64 in the game, and um, I think they are just not there. I am uh, very, very hopeful that Brendan managed to get all those uh, missing aspects, not the yellow ones, but the blue ones, into the game as well, so that the signaling as a whole works much better than it worked than it is working now. Um, one more word. What is that? Stop signal. Red over red. We will hopefully, if we are not delayed too much, get to a point in the game on our service where we get displayed a signal of that kind. A tenth aspect. Again, what am I talking about? A nine aspect system with a tenth aspect. Well, the solution is, we have seen this in the Harlem line uh, safety systems stream or video already, that the access system can hijack the cap signaling system as soon as you are approaching a red signal. And before you even get to the signal, by radio or uh, in station areas with the help of polices, the access system can take over control of the cap signaling system and, si and, 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 and order you to stop. Then you will get a zero at some point in front of the red signal and this is not part of the cap signaling system. This is not the code that is sent in the track circuit, but this comes from the access PTS, from the positive train stop system from access and typically via radio and th this is displayed on the same display as the cap aspects but is a different system talking to you here without the access system doing this you would run a red signal or for example a stop and proceed you will stop and then proceed past the red signal your um, aspect shown will be the restricted one still until you get a better one. Yeah, those are the, the, the aspects that you can actually see. And how is that put into a sequence? Let's go back and look at this. Let's imagine we have a track and we already uh, learned that the track is divided into a couple of those track circuits and for each and every track circuit you can get a different uh, signaling aspect in the cap signaling. At the same time we have wayside signals and for example, just for example, let's say here is a wayside signal that is red. The next wayside signal is here showing the approach, the next wayside signal here showing the advanced approach and the wayside signals in front of that are green. So that will be a typical progression from clear advanced approach approach red. And you can see that not at e on every joint here, there is a wayside signal. Here in my example, there are always two uh, track circuits between the wayside signals, but this can be totally different in real life. There can be a lot of them, there can be only one. Also, the track circuits ha can have different lengths. They can be very short, they can be very long. Uh, but just for the example here, that we have wayside signals and typically in between the wayside signals we have those points that are called code change points where one track circuit ends and the other one starts and where you can get uh, an updated cap signal at this point. So, if we are progressing from clear to red, what would our um, cap signaling display tell us? For 
uh, how, how we uh, are supposed to know uh, what the cap signaling is doing, we have different rules in the NOROC. We have the rules 552 and 553. You remember in the beginning of the stream we were ordered to ignore those rules. They tell us the following. Well, let's have a look at the NORAG rules actually. Those are the NORAG rules, 11 edition. And let's go to the table of content. faster maybe not so fast 552 here rule 552 conformity between cap signals and fixed signals we had this on the uh, first stream about the NORAC signaling system um, cap signals have to conform with the fixed signals that is the idea as soon as you pass a wayside signals you should get the corresponding cap signals within six seconds if this does not happen, then the fixed signal governs. That is the idea of 552A. If for whatever reason the cap, si the cap signal does not conform with the wayside signal, you should uh, follow the wayside signal. Well, and then we have to tell the dispatcher that this happened. If the cap signal conforms to the fixed signal upon entering the block, the fixed signal will govern anyway, but we don't have to tell the dispatcher. But in, ca in, in any case of a contradiction between cap signal and fixed signal, we will have to follow the fixed signal and ignore the cap signal. This is why I put into our instructions, we are exempt from this rule. We just have to follow cap signals here. And um, Uh, C tells us in case of there is any uh, nonsensical display or we cannot really see it, then we have to more or less rely on our eyes and go restricted. We have the 553 rules that are is telling us what we have to do in case that we are passing a wayside signal and at the next code change block or wherever our cap signal changes. When the cap signal aspect changes to restricting between fixed signals, then we have at once slowdown to restricted speed. That makes sense. If an interlocking signal requires medium or limited speed and the cap signal changes to a more favorable aspect, that means we have been slowed down to medium or limited speed because we are uh, limited to this speed when going over a switch and after that we can go back to line speed, then we must not increase our speed after the signal changed until the train has run its full length. This ensures that the whole train is off the switch with the limit and um, so this rule makes sense as well. Cap signal changes from restricting to more favorable, that is the opposite uh, situation than rule A. If the cap signal aspect changes from restricting to a more favorable aspect, the speed must not be increased until the train has run its length or 500 feet, whichever distance is greater. Again, we have to make sure that the whole train is across the speed changing point before we accelerate uh, above the restricting. And then this is an interesting rule D. If the cap signal changes from clear to approach medium between fixed signals, clear and then here we get an approach medium for example then we must immediately begin we must immediately begin to reduce our speed to limited speed because limited speed is the 45 that is associated with the approach medium cap signal and then must slow down even more and must approach the next fixed signal at medium speed because then we um, expect a medium clear or an approach and both signals would require us to go down to medium speed unless that signal is seen to display a more favorable aspect if we see the signal and it's giving us a better aspect then we can speed up again exception if the cap signal does not conform at the entrance then the cap signal at the end at the the fixed signal at the entrance will govern the whole block so if the cap signals do not conform when we enter a block with a fixed signal 
then we have to ignore the cap signals for the whole uh, block unless they give us a more restricting one. That ensures that we always go by the most restricting aspect. Yeah, shortly back to our, no the presentation is there, the PDF I wanted to take out. Back in the presentation, what was the NORAC rule 279? We had this in depth on the first uh, video about the NORAC system. That is actually the rule with the table that tells us how to translate wayside signals into cap signals. Obviously, we have learned there are less cap signaling aspects than wayside signaling aspects. And for that, we have the rule 279 that tells us what cap signaling aspects there can be. And then especially important, this table here, uh, how a fixed signal translates into a cap signaling aspect. And then you can see that a lot of diverse um, wayside signals all translate into restricting. Or those approach and advanced medium all translate into approach limited or approach medium aspects. This just as a recap from last time. Those are the rules more or less that are in my opinion the most important rules for translating wayside signals into cap signals. So let's have an example here. What is happening when we are running across the greens towards the red? At first we are running in the Accela for example with clear 150 maximum line speed. Also here we're passing the green signal, cap signal stays, we're passing the code change point, cap signal stays, we're passing the green signal here and then all of a sudden our signal on the cap signaling thing drops to clear 125 for example. Why does that happen? Because the machines that are connecting... Yeah, hi General! Nice to have you in the stream. Why does that happen? Because those machines that um, are connected with the track circuits, they can talk to each other and they can tell the machines in front of them uh, what they are just displaying so that the track circuits here can give the train um, a preparing signal and slow it down. So. Even though the driver is passing a green signal, cannot see the advanced approach signal here. Um, the train can already know that it is approaching an advanced approach signal here and can start slowing down the train. The next code changing point, for example, will give you a cap speed 80, where is the next available aspect below the clear 125 and then you're passing the advanced approach. And if you go by the table in 279, this advanced approach should translate into approach medium here at this point. At the next point it would still be approach medium and then you get to the approach signal and then you get the approach signal because the this is obviously what corresponds. And on the next uh, track circuit, still approaching the red signal. <laughs> yeah, they say, hello, I am signal for clear 125. Mm, maybe, I don't know, maybe only the Euro police say the hello thing. <laughs> I don't know in, in what rate you pulse the hello in the in the circuit beep 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 hello beep beep, beep. <laughs> yeah on this code change point approaching the red signal you might get already a restricting to prepare you for the stop if you were to pass the red signal and you would rely only on the cap signaling here you would get again a restricting signal here for example, if you pass the red signal because it is a stop and proceed red signal, so you stop and then you proceed. <laughs> what did you say? By the way, you can charge your phone from the race, but you need a volt converter. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting thought. Um, <laughs> I've never tried to do that. But if you say so, I guess 
you know. Yeah, by the res, because there is um, a current running in the res, and uh, if you can convert the voltage, then you can charge your phone from it. I'm convinced that works. Um, okay. We have already talked about this, that you get a stop signal if you're approaching a red signal from the access positive train stop feature though. So that typically as long as you are 12 volts to 5 volts. Okay. Um, so that you do not get into this situation as long as you're controlled by access here because then you will get a stop signal and if you do not stop your train at, uh, according to this signal aspect then your train will be uh, stopped by the access system. What speeds will you get from the ATC here? Uh, of course at first 150, 150, then 125, 80. At the medium approach typically 45. <laughs> You're charging for a drone. <laughs> True, <laughs> and all the trains in, in, in the country will get a restricting aspect because someone is charging their phone. By the way, do you know how can I turn or fail to stop a red signal? And, and, and I don't think you can turn that off. The, the game will always end if you run a red signal, at least to my knowledge. Yeah. Approach uh, a medium, we have learned that there is actually the 250 hertz aspect approach medium that is uh, associated with 30. So it would be technically possible to slow down the train at this point already to 30 when approaching the approach. But I th think it is not a thing that is done. At least I have never seen a, um, a progression of that kind. I think the medium approach 30 is only used when you're actually approaching a switch a turnout with a limit of 30. Yeah, because every time it ruins my mission. That that is actually a problem with the fail to stop at red signal thingies. Especially if the AI drivers uh, run the red signal. As far as I know, they are still working on it so that it does not happen. I guess in the game we always get the medium approach here. At the approach, we get the approach, we get told to slow down to 30, at the restrict 20, still here, and obviously with a stop signal, the zero. The most important and more complex thing is actually that here in the middle, the approach medium 45, approach medium 30, for example, or approach medium 45. How this is done here in this element is uh, something that still needs some more research, because Technically, there are a couple of ways of doing that, and I'm not sure how it is done in, in real life, actually, or if some lines are doing it in a different way. In the game, actually, you will get, at the moment at least, a clear 125, even after passing the advanced approach. F until you get to the next code change point, and then you will got get knocked over the head with an approach medium 45. So you get slowed down from 125 to 45 in one go. You can still yank in the suppression brakes so that you won't get stopped with a penalty brake. But anyway, this is the progression that you get at the moment, in my experience, in the game. Um, I have read signal progressions just today in an article about the Accela uh, where you drop from, crap sp from cap speed 80 directly to approach 30 without the uh, advanced approach in between. This seems to be a thing and it seems to be working. Brandon published an, a post on the forums where he suggested that cap speed 80 to approach medium 45 after the uh, appro uh, the advanced approach and then obviously to approach 30 on the approach signal. Works as well technically um, according to the rules. How it is done in real life would be interesting to know more about it. So if you're actually savvy and in the know, uh, don't hesitate to put us wise in, in, in the comments. Yeah, but more or less this is the 
sequence that you would expect getting slowed down then passing the advanced approach and getting the approach medium 45 maybe approach medium 30 maybe not getting anything at once and then the approach medium um, what you can see sometimes in the game instead of the advanced approach here you can get an advanced limited uh, an approach limited uh, signal instead what has a quite similar aspect it does not tell you that uh, the second signal after the advanced approach will be red but it also orders you to eventually eventually reduce your speed to limited the advanced approach tells you to reduce your speed to limited and the approach limited uh, tells you not to pass the next signal faster than limited so those two progressions you can see in the game from what I have learned by playing it. We will see how this uh, ends up after the update and what uh, corresponding cap signaling aspect we get here. So I hope this was not too confusing. The last thing that I want to introduce here is how you can get a uh, restricting um, aspect by getting into a block that is already occupied by a second train. Just go back to this uh, diagram here that we have developed in the beginning of the presentation the train is in the track and m let's have this machine here transmit an, a medium approach 45 so this train is getting the medium approach 45 and just as CD radar said um, the train is taking away the signal just like uh, Hunterius uh, charging his phone at this point, the train is picking up the signal and at the remaining part of the track there is no signal anymore. So if another train enters this block, the receiver will pick up a zero pulses per minute signal and obviously put the computer to a restricting. So that the train will get a restricting signal and has to slow down to be able to stop uh, in front of the second train that is already in the block. So this is an automatic thing. As soon as the second train enters the block that is already occupied, he will or it will get a zero pulses signal and will have to switch its display unit to restricting automatically without further ado. And uh, here you can see the benefit of A uh, connecting the restricted aspect with the zero pulses signal and B sending the signaling information back not ahead because just imagine the uh, signal would be set ahead then the second train entering the block would pick up the better signal and the train at the front would get a restricted signal at once and then the faster train runs into the slower train and this is obviously mayhem so the signaling units must send their signal back CD radar those plastic things that separate the individual sections in the tracks are great for sc <laughs> scraping the frozen wind skill oh that is good to know <laughs> if you ever come across to that so those plastic things if you actually have those insulation gaps between the tracks to separate one track circuit from the other one uh, I did not know that. This is obviously the information <laughs> that we have to rely on on UCD radar. In Bulgaria we have a trick that if somebody wants uh, can use it to understand when it will the locomotive will arrive you simply hold one of the rails and wait for vibrations if there are <laughs> any in it means that a locomotive is coming. Okay. Please don't do that at home. <laughs> It's interesting to, <laughs> to know that it still works, but um, please don't do it. It is extremely dangerous to do that, to touch the rail, to get on the rail. Um, yeah, having said this, it's extremely nice to hear. Okay, this is the end of the presentation for today, I think. Um, uh, interesting concept, this, this um, pulse code cap signaling using the AC current in the track circuit. I think that this is... <laughs> or you can just listen. Yes, that's true. <laughs> or you can just look on your app where the train is. 
supposed to be at least. I think it does not work if you do not have those insulation gaps. If you have a continuously work uh, uh, welded rail and track circuits that use um, a more or less an acoustic uh, frequency to separate one track circuit from the other by tuned circuits and, and, and this stuff, um, I think then the cap signaling doesn't work, at least not in that way. Maybe there is a way to, to work around that and, and use it still. If you know things, if you know anything about that, let us know. Sometimes it's hard to listen if there is wind or stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, but still, stepping on the rails, touching the rails, please don't do that. It is extremely dangerous. So we can see at the moment we are getting a full clear from the track and at least no lower speed from the access system. And if I did not lose enough ta uh, too, too much time, maybe we can see By the way, I can be one of your mods in the future because I am a former moderator and yeah, but let us hope that you will have more followers and then we can discuss it later. Okay, thank you very much. I will come back to you as soon as we get a bit more followers to moderate. What I ah DS, I know now what the DS means. DS is a dead section that is coming ahead. The orange one is warning you. Is the advanced sign, and the black DS sign is the sign that tells you here's a neutral section in the overhead catenary. I don't know if you have to. Uh, switch off the main circuit breaker in sections of that kind. I definitely suggest doing this, especially throttling down, putting the lever to zero, because if you're powering down uh, through a dead section, there can be a lot of electricity sparks and arcs happening on your pantograph. Well, I am also mod on one channel, just saying. CD Rater, I would be happy to have both of you as moderators. And for the moment, I'm really happy to have both of you chatting with me. People prefer a robot and shit like this than simulator games. Well, to be fair, we are making it not so super easy for people to enjoy this channel and the videos, I guess. Yeah, I totally agree. But it's not actually mainstream what we are doing here. Yeah, Trains in World is an expensive hobby, I have to confirm that. can spend a lot of money on it. They don't appreciate the feeling to drive 500 tons. <laughs> well, but on the other hand, you don't have to pay a monthly fee at least. And you don't have to throw out your money for new skins for the underwear of your pets or whatever. Approaching another station. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's funny to drive trains to be able to buy game of train driving. <laughs>
I have hacked the game, let's say, okay. I have not. I have paid for each and every one of the locomotives and routes that I use on, on my stream and on my videos. And to be fair, there's a, there is a lot of effort and work <coughs> going into those routes. Hundred dollars. Do they charge you hundred dollars in Bulgaria for for a locomotive and trains in world? <coughs> By the way, if I have not said this often enough, I love this New England scenery here on this DLC. It is really a pretty pretty. DLC and I love this route. Could be longer for my taste, but if the signaling works, it is one of the greatest routes in, routes in the game. You missed the giant cheese. I'm sorry, there is no cheese in, in Boston. Ah, for a bundle. Well, then you buy DLC for 30 euros and then it's crap. To be honest, I have never bought a DLC and thought, well, that is crap. There are DLCs that are better, there are DLCs that are worse. Sometimes you are a bit disappointed about some things. And on the other hand, you always have to look on the bright side and strive for making it better and a bit getting a bit closer to being perfect. So I'm actually speeding a bit. <laughs> Interesting question by the way. If you're slowing down using your dynamic brakes like this here, now we're getting an advanced uh, approach signal. Yanking in suppression. You can see we're still on clear on the cap signaling display. <coughs> and then you get a dead section like this here. What do you do? Switch off the main circuit breaker. Then you lose your brake effort from the dynamic brake, at least here in the game. You can see the big yellow bar on the left side on our main screen. If I turn off the main circuit breaker, I lose that. <coughs> is that what I'm supposed to do? Wayside signal now is approach limited. What results, funny enough, in the cap signal going back to clear. That means accelerating again.
Well, I'm, I'm not so super sure if I can speak for all the German people. Yeah, it definitely breaks with all to, uh, with the air brakes. But you lose the brake effort from the dynamic brakes. We got in between approach medium 45 flipping back to clear 125 there is actually a provision in the rules how you have to deal with flipping signals now the wayside signal was again an approach limited cap signals is still at clear 125 and since they told us to test the system we will go by the cap signaling and accelerate keeping in mind that we have to stop at route 128 approaching train dim your lights back to bright and what is wrong if we're only braking with the air brakes probably nothing it's just like in German directives you always read like uh, you always have to use the electric brake if possible at all well maybe it's not wrong Now we're slowing down for the stop at route 128. Alright, we're not getting you wrong, Hunterius. Now we're finally getting the approach. No, it's still an approach limited probably or an approach medium. We can't really see it because... Yeah, it's probably flashing. Maybe I have slowed down a bit too much. 50 miles should be good at 2,500 feet. You're probably right. I guess that it is better to mod not manipulate with breaker if you apply any force. The thing is, in, th in that case, I'm not doing anything. I have my combined lever at zero, but the brake on so that the automatic blending blends in the dynamic. <laughs> So I have to focus on my stop here a bit when I'm reading the chat too much I might stop wherever well good enough What did you say? Full throttle, top speed, then emergency brakes and all other kind of brakes. Yes. <coughs> Maybe turn off the bells. Well, obviously, when I'm passing an advanced approach signal, for example, or any other signal that tells me to slow down, and I'm applying brakes and I cannot uh, release the brakes just because I'm passing a dead section, right? <laughs> uh, 
What is that? Ah, yeah, this is the, the funny thing. There are actually a lot of passengers here, but sometimes there are points in the passenger uh, pathing where they actually get quite confused. Like this here is a, a bottleneck where they all have to pass through and they have a hard time sorting sorting out which of them is supposed to go up on the platform and go down. Just one of the little problems that you run in if, if you want to have more passengers on the routes. So, I hope we will make it in time to our stop to see the stop signal aspect on the on the cap signaling unit. If everything goes according to plan, we will catch up with uh, an MBTA train running towards Boston. Just build a bigger stairs. Yeah, it's true. And then move move the pathing for the passengers so that they actually use the full width of the stairs. And then someone comes along and tells you, no, this station in real life has these small stairs only. And the simulation is totally unrealistic. Not one single station in, whole, in the whole state of Massachusetts has stairs as wide as those. That is a beautiful station here. Don't know really why, but I really love that here. Train from the opposite. I'm speeding a bit deliberately so that we do not miss the the red signal even though access is telling us to slow down to 120 okay don't want to run into oh now we got an access penalty over speed but I just wanted to catch this train here on the left good thing about the penalty break from access is that it only slows us down below the limit not to a standstill only applies a service break application and as soon as we are below speed limit it hands control back to us now there will be a reduction to 110 no 115 it is can actually go a bit faster yeah now we we o overtook this MBTA train And you're thinking, well, 
We are the express train. Good thing we overtook this slow commuter train. But now we will see what the dispatcher is doing. He will slow us down to let the commuter train pass. Approach limited. Wayside signal. Um, to be fair, I am not trained to, tr to drive a train in real life. If I would be able, I don't know. I've never tried. I never had the opportunity to try. By the way, can you drive it? I like that America use text everywhere. In Europe, you use symbols and icons for everything. Yeah, that is true. Obviously, like everyone playing on a on a train simulator, I would love to try if I were able to drive a train in real life. I guess if someone put me into a train that is already set up correctly and all I need to do is to release the brakes and apply the throttle, I might be able to operate it in a way as that I get it moving and stop again but there is probably a more to driving a train than this well again I got into the ATC penalty break here because I did not have the suppression brake on long enough I hope I did not ruin our stop signal by doing this. Now that we are running in an approach, here is the next code changing point. You can always see that by these two metal plates in the track. And now it is slowing us down to restricting. Now let's pay attention a bit. and not release the brakes too early because now we are limited to 20 and the MBTA train is coming back so they must have the mayor on board or, or someone important like this that the dispatcher is slowing down the express train to let the commuter train pass So I hope we will make it to the next signal in time so that we can see the stop signal aspect that comes from the access positive train stop. The signals are around the next corner and when we are approaching at some point in time we get the stop signal aspect from the access. Now we still have to crawl through this through this tunnel, I guess. Here are the signals and they are still red at least also the one for us and now we just approach the red signal with 20 <coughs> and now you can see we are getting the stop signal indication and we will have to wait for the signals
Now signals are switching back to approach. We're getting a medium approach. And we can accelerate. Did the stream break or something? Because for a short while I was not able to see anything on my monitor. No, it looks fine. That is good. So you also uh, saw the stop signal and the signal is turning to approach because now obviously since we passed the approach signal according to rule 552 the cap signal switched to approach as well So we're already approaching Boston Back Bay with an approach signal. If we're lucky, we'll switch back to approach medium at some point. Now we got a clear, by the way. Okay, I won't accelerate to 120 now, even though Axis allows it. Because quite soon we will probably get an approach medium anyway. Yes, approach medium 45 from the ATC. This is the classic 100 hertz signal. And now, quite soon, we will get an approach medium 30. And there I thought. Hey, the train can read 100 hertz, 250 hertz signals, but actually this was a misunderstanding on my side because the switching to 30 that we will see quite soon now comes from the axis. We are entering a piece of track with a track speed of 30, so we will still have the approach medium aspect but combined with a track limit of 30 and then the track limit of 30 governs and you will see that this orange light here from the left will switch over to the right as soon as now axis took over so this is not the 250 hertz aspect this is still the 100 hertz aspect Oh. Precious commuter train is just leaving the station as we are coming in. The dwarf signal in front of us, yellow over flashing red. If you look into the NORAC rules, they tell you this is a medium approach signal on a dwarf signal a, a signal that is fixed to the floor and this translates to 
passing this signal with medium speed being prepared that the next signal is at stop. When we pass the signal we will get a restricted at once though. I'm not entirely sure whether this is intentional and it will be interesting to see what happens to this signal after the update. This time let's let's close the door from the panel. Open, open lift. Close right doors, this should be the correct one. Let's see if it works. Yes. It worked. Release the brakes. Throttle. Move if you can. Yes, you can. Can have the lights on again. And now you see the signal here will switch to a restricting at once. So we are limited to 20 instead of the 30 that a medium approach would allow and what the track speed would allow. But hey, then we stick to the 20. and we crawl into the Boston South Station area. At the moment you can see that we get a 20 limit from the ATC and no feed from the access speed limit, at least it is not displayed here. Under the next bridge, the line speed will drop to 15. So Axis will take over and give us a max of 15. Using the dynamic brake only to slow down to the 15. You can see orange light here switched to the Axis on the right side. And the indicator to 15. And now going in into Boston South Station, pay attention to the next signal on top of the track, those yellow lights there. This is actually a stop signal. Typically you would have those domino style lights on the ground, but here you have them overhead and in a horizontal fashion position light signals horizontal are always red signals so if we were to pass this signal here we would spat out at the same time here obviously we do not get an access PTS feed because we are still on restricting and did not get a stop signal indication and no access to zero. Meanwhile you can see that this train that is passing there is the reason for the red signal here. Yeah, 10 from the axis and 20 from the ATC results in 10 from the axis being active. That is now it's switched to approach. Well, 
what our aspect display unit picked up. <coughs> it's actually a slow approach since all those dwarf signals are typically slow signals like slow clear, slow approach. But this does not make a lot of difference. Since the axis speed here, the track speed is at 10. Our display unit allows us to go 20 here according to the restricted. But the red lamp here on the no valid TSR data is indicating that we are not getting valid access data. So the track limit is not uh, transferred to the train by the access system anymore. Maybe at this point we should get this double sl double slash um, no it's not a slash those uh, what is it called? A hyphen, yeah, a double hyphen that you get f uh, on the Harlem line when you're outside of uh, access territory. But we are not getting it. You can see here in, in the speed display that we are actually in a 10 miles section, but our unit is still allowing us 20, even though it tells us we are outside of access territory. If you look here, you can see that the access speed limit is actually given as 60 miles what is obviously insanely high for a station area so this cannot be true either so I don't know how it is in real life in the Boston South Station area but as soon as you are out of access territory you should be restricted to 10 miles like in the Harlem line or something like this on the Harlem line when you're entering Grand Central or driving past North White Plains into the yard and the access territory ends you will get the double hyphens in your access indicator and the system will control you to 10 miles I guess something of that kind should happen here as well. Well, service is coming to an end. What have we learned about the system here? We have learned that so far the vehicles in the Boston DLC only understand the 100 Hz codes obviously not the 250 Hertz codes that the access positive train stop facility uh, feature works at least on the signals on the track signal progression wise we are not quite sure how we deal with a advanced approach signals and at what point we get the medium or the approach medium 45 aspect so it will be really interesting how the new signaling will be I trust that that Brandon is totally able to give us the best that is achievable mm -hmm. at the time being and I am more than happy to investigate and see what we can do with it. By the way, I use this special anniversary livery 50 years of Amtrak and then somehow Dovetail Games got Amtrak to work with them and uh, create this anniversary uh, livery with Train Sim World 2 at the time that was given out for free for everyone who owned the Boston Providence DLC. So we made it across the state border from Rhode Island to Massachusetts and are here in this beautiful New England, England DLC. I hope the new signaling will be great and soon enough I'm planning on riding the same or driving the same 
service again under the new signaling and investigate uh, what the differences are and how far we got to the real thing. Thank you very much guys. I thought the German signals are confusing, but geez, flashing red, America is next level confused. Well, America is confusing because it's so fragmented and uh, fragmented, and everyone is using <coughs> a different system, signaling-wise, cap signaling-wise. <coughs> That's even worse than Europe with its whatever 17 or 18 different train control systems. Thank you very much, CD Radar. Thank you very, m thank you very much, Antirius, for your input, and uh, of course, thank you very much, AJ, for uh, for moderating the stream. And I hope to see you soon. Have a good time. Take care, and a good boy. <laughs>